Thank you for joining us. We begin our report with Israel and its allies around the world, marking one year since the deadly Hamas attack on October 7th, 2023. From Jerusalem to Paris and beyond, mourners gathered Monday to remember the 1,200 people killed on that day and the dozens still being held hostage, including those who may no longer be alive. Since October 7th, the World Health Organization reports more than 1,500 total people have been killed in Israel and nearly 42,000 in Gaza. Earlier, Vice President Kamala Harris addressed the conflict. We must work to ensure nothing like the horrors of October 7 can ever happen again. And on this solemn day, I will restate my pledge to always ensure that Israel has what it needs to defend itself. The White House, President Biden and First Lady Jill Biden took part in a candle lighting ceremony. In a statement, the president also condemned the, quote, vicious surge in anti-Semitism in America. The Anti-Defamation League found there were more than 10,000 incidents of anti-Semitism over the past year. That's up more than 200 percent from the previous year. The majority of those incidents were either verbal or written harassment, according to the group. The war with Hamas has also brought a new reality to the Middle East. In addition to the fight in Gaza, Israel is now engaged in a multi-front conflict against Hezbollah militants in Lebanon and the Houthis in Yemen. Israeli leaders are also contemplating how and when to respond to Iran's missile attack last week, the country's largest ballistic missile attack on Israel yet. CBS News foreign correspondent Chris Livesay joins us now from Tel Aviv. Uh, Chris, we hear those sirens in the background. Um, how are Israelis marking the one year since the October 7th attack? Hey, John, you know, they're remembering it with a, a series of solemn remembrances across the country. We were at one where there were relics of that horrific event on October 7th. There were cars that were recovered from the Nova Music Festival where Hamas gunmen killed hundreds of people and took many more hostage. And what was so unique about this event, despite its grandeur, it had absolutely nothing to do with the government of Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu. And that was very deliberate on the part of the families who organized it, the families of survivors, the families of victims, the families of hostages who are still being held in Hamas captivity. Many of them blame the prime minister for allowing October 7th to have ever happened to begin with, because it was on his watch. He was supposed to be protecting the Gaza envelope, this area just outside of Gaza. Instead, we witnessed one of Israel's worst ever security breaches, intelligence breaches, and according to them, a leadership breach that uh, witnessed the biggest single attack on Jews since the Holocaust. And that's something that virtually everybody in this country mentions when they talk about October 7th, how it just ripped open that wound from the Holocaust. And of course, Chris, there's activity um, really all over the place. Let's start with Hamas earlier Monday. Hamas fired a rocket into Israeli territory. How is Israel responding? Uh, and, and just update us a little bit on where things stand in Gaza right now. Well, not just Hamas, actually, when we were at this memorial that I mentioned, we had to duck for cover and hit the ground because we got a warning that a ballistic missile fire, fired from Yemen, fired from uh, the Iran-backed Houthi militants, was heading straight towards Tel Aviv. And then, of course, in the north, we had rockets coming over from Hezbollah as well. Look, as far as the, the operations are concerned, the war is concerned in Gaza, uh, even though the fighting force of Hamas has been just dramatically reduced since the start of this war. Um, there is still fighting ongoing. And the, the primary reason, if you ask the government of Benjamin Netanyahu, is because there are still hostages being held, also because Hamas is still able to govern itself to, to some degree. And that's another thing they want to reduce. But the, the main impetus, at least coming from the people of this country, is that there are still hostages being held. Approximately 100 hostages, according to the government, only half of them are still alive. And finally, on the northern border, as you mentioned, what's the latest with fighting with uh, between Israel and Hezbollah in Lebanon? 
Right, John. Well, you know, there was that, that ground incursion, that limited ground incursion that was announced early last week, according to, uh, according to Israel. Of course, the word limited is in the eye of the beholder, and we're starting to see that incursion grow uh, bigger and bigger. We're seeing more cross-border attacks taking place. We're starting to see some of the first casualties on the part of uh, the Israeli military. And this is where things start to get scary if you're Israel, because the, the last time they fought a war against Hezbollah in Lebanon back in 2006, uh, it was a short war, but it was a very bloody war. And we started to see things like suicide bombs from Hezbollah. We saw them fighting on their home turf. We, they're very skilled at guerrilla warfare. Um, it, it's a very mountainous, treacherous area. This is Hezbollah's home turf, in other words. It's no longer just airstrikes. It's no longer just uh, sabotage in the form of, of beepers and walkie-talkies exploding, but this is a war in which Hezbollah is much more familiar with fighting. Chris Lutzay in Tel Aviv. Thanks so much, Chris. Thanks, John.